what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And today's video is a story of mice and men and horses. And I wanted to talk to you about this after I came across an article in the New York Times. And the article is titled, Why Does a Hard Workout Make You Less Hungry? And this article was based on a study that was just published a couple of weeks ago. And the study has a title that is far less interesting. The study is titled, An Exercise Inducible Metabolite That Suppresses Feeding and Obesity. Not quite as fun as a New York Times title. But the article talks about the type of exercises that makes you hungry. Let's get started with a question. When you go out for a run, do you come back and are you hungry? Have you noticed a certain type of workout that you do that makes you more hungry than others or maybe you run fasted in the morning and by the time you get back you're absolutely famished and you can't wait to sit down for breakfast let me know because there is actually a good reason why you are more hungry after some workouts than others and it also explains a lot to me why after races after I'm done racing I am not hungry at all and I kind of have to force myself to eat because I know I need to get that energy back in and you may have seen this with yourself or perhaps you've read other studies that show that even though you're exercising people gain weight and I think I do have a video somewhere on the channel about marathon running and gaining weight while you're training for a marathon. And typically this is seen with newer runners because someone that starts a running routine, they're not used to that increased level of hunger. And if you don't adjust your caloric intake, you're probably gonna find yourself eating a lot more than you used to. And because running doesn't automatically burn a boatload of calories, perhaps we start eating more calories than we did before, even though we're running. And then that leads to unintended consequences like weight gain sometimes. So let's be clear, there are a load of factors that play into how hungry someone gets after after they work out and if they are going to lose weight or gain weight or keep it even these things include their current fitness level their body mass their diet their gender their genetics their metabolic rate and even the timing of the exercise can actually affect how much fat you burn or how much energy you burn some studies have even shown that working out in the morning burns more fat than if you work out at other times of the day of course there are contradictory studies that show the exact opposite but we'll just ignore those for now oh and this is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running i want to hear about your success Successes, and I definitely want to hear about your setbacks. And if you like running and you like hearing about running science and things that affect your running, it'd be great if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. It really helps me and helps the channel out. Okay, let's talk about this study. So the scientists had an idea what they were looking for and they knew they were probably looking at something that changed after exercise. So they started hunting for molecules that increased post-exercise rather than pre-exercise. And they began the study with mice and they put the mice on these little treadmills and they watched them run and they made them run gradually faster and faster until the mice were exhausted. So obviously they took blood samples before the exercise and then they took blood samples after the exercise and they went through the thousands or millions or billions of molecules in the mice blood. And there was one molecule that stood out more than any others. Now this molecule that increased more than any others was known about, but its chemistry and how it affected biology was unknown. So this molecule that they found was a mix of lactate and the amino acid phenylalanine. Am I saying that right? phenylalanine. And this blend, this hybrid molecule, was released apparently in response to high levels of lactate that are released during exercise. So I won't have to say the name phenylalanine again because the scientists named this hybrid LACFE. L-A-C hyphen P-H-E. LACFE. So the scientists took this information, they saw that it increased after exercise, and they thought, hmm, maybe that has something to do with appetite. So to test it, they kind of dosed some really obese mice with LACFI, and those mice decreased their food intake by 30% after being dosed with a LACFI. So apparently it's reducing appetite, but that's just one study. Now we have to go a little deeper. So the scientists went back to exercise and they bred mice that produced very little LACFI. And they had those mice that produced very little LACFI run on their little treadmills again five times a week for several weeks. And after each run, the mice were able to eat as much as they want. Sounds Sounds like a pretty good deal on the surface. So normally the running will keep the weight off the mice. Even when they're eating a high calorie diet, if they're running a lot, the mice weight usually stays down. But in the mice that didn't produce any lactate, their weight ballooned and they gained 25% more weight than the control group. So with that, it kind of proves that lactate had been a key to how strenuous exercise helped the mice avoid weight gain. And without that lactate, it resulted in the mice overeating. So it looks like the lactate is controlling appetite or limiting appetite. Now we have to up the ante just a little bit. So first we're dealing with mice, now it's time to take it to the race course and look at racehorses. And Kelsapreze, they found it in the bloodstream of racehorses at higher levels after they exercise than before. And I know that you've been watching me explain this experiment for about two minutes, but we've already jumped to human trials. So this human trials experiment involved eight young men, sorry, again, no women. What is it with these researchers not including women in their studies? So these eight male participants had to do three bouts of exercise. One was cycling at leisurely place for 90 minutes. The second was lifting weights. And the third was doing several 30 second sprints on a stationary 
recovery bike. And the researchers found that blood laxity peaked after each kind of exercise, but it was highest after the 30 second sprints, second highest after the weight training, and it reached its lowest peak after the 90 minute just spinning your legs on the bike. So what they found, at least in mice, that the more intense the exercise is, the more the lack fee spikes and more the corresponding dip in appetite. So we already know about leptin and ghrelin and how those affect our appetite, but now we have a whole new molecule to consider. And perhaps this is the key, which actually supports what I said earlier about not feeling like eating at the end of races. At a race, we're gonna be putting in a full out effort. I don't have that same feeling after my normal daily run. In fact, I've gotta say, when I come home from my normal daily run, I'm usually pretty hungry. Although there are some confounds in that, on my normal daily run, Run, I don't eat breakfast before my run, and when I race, I usually eat breakfast before the race. So ultimately, if you do find yourself getting very hungry after a workout, maybe you're a new runner, maybe you're not, but perhaps you just find these cravings after you run insatiable and you just binge, maybe going out and upping the intensity a little more often is going to help you reduce your appetite. Who knows? But then we have to weigh the dangers of running intense more often and that we're probably going to raise our chances of injury. So I guess what it comes down to is you have a decision to make. Do you want to be injured or do you want to gain weight? Oh, I hope that's not the takeaway of this video. Anyway, I will put links to the New York Times article and the study in the show notes below. All right, my friends, I had a pretty good week. Week started off on Monday, no surprise there, but I ran seven and a half miles, very easy. You know how I do, easy Mondays. Because on Tuesday, Tuesday was a workout day, and this Tuesday was intervals. I did 12 400 meter repeats with 400 meters recovery in between. Ran a total of 8.7 miles, warmed up for a couple before, cooled down for a little bit after, felt pretty good. I do have to say that I was struggling on those intervals from the beginning. It was a very warm morning, and when I say struggle, I mean, I think I was mentally struggling to get that workout done. But it's all good. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Then on Wednesday, Wednesday I knocked out 10 miles very easy. Just going out and working up a sweat. Thursday was my second workout of the week. And on this day, I ran a 10.2 miles total, warmed up for two miles, ran a 10K at tempo pace, and then I cooled down for two miles. And every week, every week I'm reminded how hard it is to run fast, especially when I'm getting towards the end of that 10K and it's only a 10K pace. It's not a race pace, but it's hard. I know it has something to do with the warm temperatures at this time of year, but just ain't easy. Anyway, it's all good because on Friday, Friday was my day off this week. And then Saturday, Saturday I knocked out 15 miles. That was my long run. And I didn't expect to run that far as my long run this week. Luckily or unluckily, I had a horrible night's sleep on Friday night to Saturday morning. So I got up way too early and that gave me enough time to knock out the 15 miles. So silver linings, eh? And then Sunday, I wrapped up the week with 7.8 miles, very easy. Ran over to the mall and ran up and down the car park, like I do every other Sunday. Bringing my week's total to 59.27 miles, which is about 95.4 kilometers. So all in all, pretty good week. Absolutely no complaints. Your body's feeling good. Can't really ask for more than that. All right, guys, don't forget, let me know about your week of running, successes and setbacks. Thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.